All right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and start reading chapter two of Chris B's beautiful novel. Um, Time is ticking. Moments pass. What will cause the final destruction of planet Earth? That is the question Chris has all the answers for. As Chris called Shelby, he began to explain his theory of how the earthquakes and the sinkholes were caused and how they started to appear all around the world. Describing to Shelby, Ever since we began to pull oil from the planet, there has been more earthquakes and sinkholes that keep occurring and rapidly growing. I'm sorry, I can't continue reading. <laughs> like, I just can't. <clears throat> Shelby thought to himself for a moment, then said to Chris, No, it can't be. We get our oil from the dinosaur bones, so that's impossible. <clears throat> just like the others would say to him. Just like the others would say to him. So, Chris then explained, Oil doesn't come from dinosaurs. So, you're telling me when someone finds a dinosaur fossil, then brushes it for days and digs it up to find the entire body of bones, they find oil? Okay, I don't think anyone thought that, but... <clears throat> Shelby said, no, they don't find oil. That is true. Chris then men mentions to Shelby, Years ago, we had huge ancient trees on this planet that no one has ever seen before. We cut them down, and they contained a healing property to the planet and oil underneath. The trees then provided the oil for the planet to survive off of its natural gas to get itself lubricated for the Earth's long lifespan. Yeah. Okay. As Chris continued to describe in detail more on his theory, he could tell Shelby was drifting off. So Chris raised his voice and shouted, Hey, Shelby, pay attention and listen. This is serious. So if you were to drive your car with absolutely no oil in the engine, what would happen? <clears throat> Shelby aggressively responded with, I don't even know. <laughs> Same. Honestly, honestly, same. Chris then immediately explains, if you were to drive your car with no oil in the engine, it would instantly heat up and grind the pistons and gears together, causing friction and high heat to the point of seizing up, causing a piston to burst out the sidewall, basically exploding because there was no oil in it to help keep it cool and lubricated. So can anyone tell me if that's true or if he just made that up as well? I mean, I'm sure something bad would happen, but I kind of feel like he doesn't know anything about anything. So, um, <clears throat> so think about it. If we took all the oil out of the earth, what do you think would happen to the fault lines? What if the oil is the lifespan of our earth and it needs the oil to lubricate itself and keep life going? So he really just sat here high on weed and thought, dude, what if the earth ran on oil like a car does? And he wrote a book about it. Wow. Without the oil from the earth, if we continue to strip it away, we, in turn, are taking away from Earth's lifespan. Once it gets too low, just like a car engine, it can and will give out, seizing up and eventually, and eventually collapsing in on itself, exploding out into a new sun or into a million pieces, and vanish into nothing like our planet and species never even existed. We are practically setting ourselves up to sit on an atomic bomb. You're supposed to say a ticking time bomb, Chris. Shelby then took a long pause, and then continued to tell Chris, You are correct. That would happen. I am picturing the Earth as a car engine, and the Earth has those special placements where oil is kept deep inside the earth to obviously lubricate the fault lines. This may be going off topic a bit, but just like a car engine, you need a radiator for water to keep it cool running through the engine. And just like the earth has water tunnels running through and connecting them to oceans and wells to keep the earth cool. So it all ties together and makes sense. The world is like one big engine. Yes, you are right. Chris exclaimed. I never thought about the water as well. That is a great point. As if it is to keep the earth cool as the oil lubricates it. 
Chris then began to tell Shelby, In the Bible, it says Adam and Eve were not to take the apple from the tree. Eve took the apple anyway and ate a bite, as the story goes. And then she got in trouble. So it makes me think that's our message. It's not the fruit we are told not to take, but the planet Earth's materials to survive. <clears throat> but the planet Earth's materials to survive is what not to take, such as oil, coal, trees, and our water. Along with destroying our oceans and putting off horrible pollution damaging our ozone layers, destroying Earth. By doing so, we are taking from what we need to continue to live on this planet and what makes the world functional to destroying it and making it unlivable. The Earth is not functioning correctly due to crazy unusual weather, along with below freezing temperatures never seen before and melting hot temperatures that are record-breaking. Okay. I mean, at least he believes in global warming. As Chris and Shelby continued their conversation, Shelby continued to tell Chris that he was correct. And this is his fantasy. And it all makes sense to him now. After all the years, Chris would explain to Shelby. As it took years for Shelby to understand what Chris meant with his theories. Because with what Chris would tell Shelby and say, it would end up happening a few months later, Shelby would notice. Just as Chris was about to speak, he heard a loud crashing sound. Right as Shelby screamed, the phone lost all connection. Chris started redialing Shelby's number frantically over and over, but never got an answer. Chris then decided to go on a mission to find his best friend Shelby. He headed out to Shelby's home on his way. A few houses before Shelby's, Chris witnessed his first sinkhole. Never seen before, so dark like an abyss to nothing. Come to find out, because of some pedestrians that witnessed the scene, Chris found out he was standing at the very spot his friend Shelby just passed away at <laughs> before any paramedic help arrived. The people said a car swerved to avoid the sinkhole, and that's when they hit Shelby, bringing both of the cars down together to their death. Chris then brought his story and theory to the news and bloggers around the world. Wow. Warning many others of what is taking place, hoping to find a cure and start petitioning by telling the people, stop pumping oil, pump it back into the earth as it may solve our solution. It was only a matter of time before Chris would get feedback from all over the world. It is not finished yet as the devastation works its way up to the big moment. Destruction of planet Earth getting worse. You know what that reminds me of? That actually reminds me of, um, do any of y'all know that? heaven's gate cult and they i've i'm actually psychotic so i watched their um, videos like their initiation videos repeatedly and um uh, what is it that he says at the beginning he says planet earth about to be recycled your only chance to leave is to or he's like what it doesn't matter what his exact words but yeah but he was like your only chance to survive is to evacuate with us so, I don't know. That's just what that reminds me of. Um, I'm hoping Chris B. won't start a cult and get a bunch of people to commit suicide. But you really never know. Chapter 3. Years earlier. Wait, was this the only chapter that has a title? I think... Yeah. The first two chapters did not have titles, but this one does. I don't know. That's just kind of weird. Um... Chapter 3, Years Earlier Eric woke up to a beautiful sunny morning in... Eric woke up to a beautiful sunny morning in North Dakota. With a comma there. As usual, making breakfast and having his coffee. He takes care of his elderly mother and father. While enjoying his morning, a massive earthquake struck while Eric was in his home with his parents rushing them to safety under a doorway to make sure nothing fell onto them. Okay. After the shaking stopped, Eric headed out the front door and proceeded to go about his day and head off to work in his blue pickup truck. Eric works for a mining company, planting dynamite to deepen the mine and extract the coal from the ground for its valued energy. As Eric used his pickaxe to dig away at the mine, 
He struck the wall. He then noticed a black liquid ooze was dripping from the wall. Within a matter of seconds, the black liquid that was dripping began to start spraying with cre pressure onto Eric's face. He quickly then yelled, Run! We struck an oil line! You would think if they were digging a mine, they would have like the schematics as to whether an oil line was in the ground or not. Unless he thinks that oil lines are naturally occurring. You know what? I don't know anything about it, so maybe I'm wrong, but I don't think that's what would happen when you struck strike oil. Why would it just spray out of the ground as if it was like under pressure? I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. <clears throat> While Eric was running towards the exit of the mine, he reached the halfway point almost clearing the cave, when all of a sudden, due to the pressure building behind the wall, it then exploded and gave out, creating mass oil to spew from out of the cave wall, making it impossible for the other workers to walk as they were slipping and sliding all over the place, running into one another, making them fall and creating a devastating scene, taking the life of one worker before he was able to make it out of the mine to safety. After the devastating disaster of the mine Eric lost, it was at that moment he realized he struck black gold. Creating new jobs for his fellow workers, he then decided to build an oil field. Wasn't that what they were already looking? This, that is when he started making millions of dollars all by pulling oil from the ground. Okay, so I guess this is still the same chapter. The next page is just titled May 14th, 2025. Oh, I guess the other one was earlier, but he didn't date. Whatever. Who cares? Fucking. Why am I? Anyways, Eric awoke to yet another beautiful, sunny, clear day in North Dakota. Doing his usual morning routine, getting his coffee ready, and caring for his elderly mother and father, turning on the news as he would any other day. As Eric headed out to go to his job site in his new big white pickup truck he was able to buy because of building an oil field wow he switched from blue to white that is crazy he noticed the day started to seem off and not like the normal days he has been having birds were flying in flocks around his truck creating a massive disturbance on his way to the job site he was noticing all of the animals were not acting normal as if they were trying to tell us something and trying to escape. Moments before he pulled up to the job site, a deer ran out in front of his truck, causing Eric to swerve off the road. As Eric got out of his truck to check the accident that just occurred, he noticed the deer was very disoriented and behaving strangely. Walking in circles, shaking its head back and forth, jumping up and down like something was really wrong. Once the deer ran away, Eric hopped back up into his truck and continued to the job site. When he got to the oil field, he noticed the ground felt very unstable and hollow beneath him, almost as if he could feel the vibrations coming up from the ground. As the day went on, Eric decided to turn on the radio, changing the channel to the news station. As Eric was listening to the radio, he heard about a guy named Chris from somewhere in California and his theory about the earth and what pulling the oil is causing. As Eric switched to another radio station, he noticed Chris was trending on all of the major news stations talking about his theory. Chris was the main subject for every station Eric turned on. It then clicked into Eric's mind of what really is happening, since he felt the weird vibrations and hollow ground right under his feet. Eric then decided to shut down the oil field, and at that very instant, a small earthquake occurred. Eric started to think back and realized no earthquakes have been happening in that area until he decided to build the oil field and started pulling oil from the ground. As Eric was listening more to the theory and predictions Chris was speaking about on the news, Eric decided it was time to shut down the oil field he built and instead invest his millions into Chris and his theory to help fix. <laughs> wow, okay. This is what he's writing about. Someone giving him millions of dollars for his crackpot meth-induced theories. Um, 
and instead invest his millions into Chris and his theory to help fix what we have destroyed and give back to the planet Earth. Eric felt very guilty knowing he was one of the people to cause the disaster, and he knew it was only right to go forth and find Chris to end it. Moments before Eric arrived home to pack his bag to find Chris, another earthquake hit. This time, it was a big one, like no one has ever felt before. Eric's truck was then lifted up off the ground due to all the shaking, causing him to swerve off to the side road until the shaking was over. He then continued on his way home. Right as Eric pulled up into the driveway of his home, another disaster struck, but this time creating a sinkhole right by the back door of his home, working its way to the living room. Eric grabbed for his mother and father, but just as he was about to grab his father's arm, a large wood beam fell from the ceiling onto his father's legs, trapping him, unable to move. Just as Eric was trying to lift the beam from the top of his father, he realized the beam was too heavy and he was not strong enough to lift it. As the sinkhole began to rapidly grow, his father shouted, Go! Leave me here! Take your mother and yourself to safety! Either way, I am trapped and can't move! I am going down with this sinkhole no matter what, son. I love you and your mother very much. Take care of yourselves. Now go! Eric then let go of his father's hand, running to safety with his mother in his arms, as she was in a daze, oblivious to what was happening around her. Seconds after their feet hit the front porch, that's when they heard it. Loud, crashing, and snapping of wood. As they both... Uh, I, uh, I really hope that someone... I think someone took a screenshot earlier. I'm really hoping that whoever that is... Because I don't think that I even have the... Um, you know, it would make sense sort of like when you buy an album on Bandcamp. I'm going to stop talking, but it would make sense sort of like when you buy an album on Bandcamp. They give you the physical and they give you the digital right away. So I don't think I have a digital copy of this book, but I, I think someone did unless they just typed the paragraph out. Anyway, I would I just the way that he types and the mistakes he makes are so funny, just like sentence structure and grammar mistakes that you can't really get across when you're reading but um it's hilarious just everything about this book is great uh where was i as they both looked back to see their beautiful two-story home that eric was born and raised in collapse right before their eyes with the sinkhole taking down the entire house bringing his father down with the devastation once his mother realized what had happened and the father wasn't with them, she started hysterically screaming and crying out for him, pounding Eric on the chest, screaming, Why? Why did you not save him? Oh, she's one of those moms who's like, yeah, you need to put your husband before your kid. As Eric explained to his mother, Dad was trapped under a big wooden beam. I couldn't save him. He told me to let him go and take care of you and me and that he loves us both very much. Once Eric calmed his mother down, she then understood the situation and was no longer angry. As they both got into the truck to head to Eric's sister's house to drop off his mom to be cared and looked out for. That's when Eric realized he was set and determined to embark on his journey to find Chris. Eric's mother started to reminisce on the home of her and her husband's 60 years of marriage telling Eric stories that he has never heard before of how his mom and dad fell in love those many years ago, right after he died. Wow, she's gotten over this pretty quickly. Once Eric dropped his mom off and told the sister, the sister, not his sister, what happened to their father in the home? That's all one sentence. Once Eric's, Eric dropped his mom off and told the sister what happened to his father in their home, whatever. That was one sentence. That makes no sense. Uh, Eric was ready to leave and embrace the journey ahead of him and find Chris to invest his millions into his theory, hoping to help save the world from this devastation before it's too late. All right, I am going to start chapter four <clears throat> later on tonight, so I'm going to go ahead and upload this one right now. But I just think it's really funny how this is basically, this is Chris B's fantasy, is... Um, that one of his crackpot method theories is actually correct and people you know his theory is that he literally made up in his head with almost zero understanding of science or anything um that one of these theories is correct 
and that crispy can you know people start believing him they listen to him they go oh wow you're actually right and you know his theory helps to save the entire planet and he gets millions of dollars invested in him that's that's his fantasy is that he makes some bullshit up and it turns him into a massive hero with millions of dollars like that's not going to happen. I'm sorry. That's not going to happen. But he's incredibly delusional. I mean, I know everyone already knows this. This is a group for Uncle Adams. But just the fact that these people are like, yeah, I'm just going to, like, make some bullshit. I mean, at least Uncle Adams put, I think Uncle Adams put a lot more, puts a lot more effort into his music than Chris B does. Because there's no way. Like, Chris B's music has zero effort. And I'm just talking about, I'm not just talking about, like, you know the money that you put into it obviously uncle adams puts way too much money into his music for it to be what it is but and you know chris b's music i'm sure he doesn't have a lot of money to invest despite what he keeps claiming but um you know just the effort like it's crap <laughs> he wants to put zero effort into something and be rewarded massively which you know same pretty much same but um anyway I'm going to go ahead and upload that now, and then I'll start reading chapter four tomorrow. Not tomorrow. Actually, I'm going to start reading it tonight, and I'm going to upload it tonight. So I'm going to upload the next video tonight. Uh, see you guys.